Good morning, everyone. Thanks for tuning in to Life United Church Online. We are pastors David and Dara, and we want to welcome you this morning. We hope that you are comfortable and ready to receive an amazing message this morning. Hey, we encourage you to comment and engage in this chat. Just tell us where you are and who you're watching with today. If you would like to fill out our online connect card, give online, or even submit a prayer request, all of those links are included in the description of this video. To all of our church family, we love you so much. We have missed seeing you and hugging on everyone and worshiping together. We encourage you to worship with us during this time of praise and worship. Thank you for tuning in, and we hope that you are strengthened and encouraged through today's service. We thank you, Lord, for all that you're doing for us, Lord. All that you have done, all you've brought us through, and what you're going to bring us into and bring us out again, Lord. We give you the glory and honor and praise, Lord. We thank you for all that you're doing this morning. We thank you for all you're doing in our lives, Lord. We praise you through it all.
We just thank you for your goodness. We thank you for your faithfulness. You are always good and you'll never let us down. You're such a good father. We just thank you for your faithfulness to us. Let the king of my heart be the mountain where I run. The fountain I drink from. Oh, he is my the king of my heart be the shadow where I hide the ransom for my life oh he is my song and you are good you're good oh and you are good you're good oh
Father God, you're so good. You are our way maker, our miracle worker, our promise keeper, and our light in the darkness. Everything that we're going through, Father, we know that you're there with us. Father God, thank you for meeting us here today. Thank you for giving us the opportunity to come together and worship. Father God, we're trusting you. We're trusting you to be our light in the darkness. We're trusting you to be our way maker. Stop working. 
You never stop, you never stop working. Even when I don't see it, you're working. Even when I don't feel it, you're working. You never stop, you never stop working. You never stop. Hey, we hope that you enjoyed that time of worship from our team. We're so thankful for the time and the effort and the energy that they're putting in to allow us to worship with them during this time. But I believe that it's a blessing. But today we have a special message from a special guest, although they're not really a guest all that much, I suppose. Uh, it's our uh, senior pastor from our Shreveport location. Pastor Sam is going to share a message with you today. So I believe, and I just encourage you today, lean in because I believe it's going to both strengthen you and encourage you today. I believe it's going to stir up your heart uh, full of faith during this time so that as we talked about last week, that we could level up and that we can move into what God has for us. Hello, Life United Lake Charles. So good to be with you this morning. I have a word for you today that I feel like will help you and I want to share with you. But let's pray before we get started. Father, thank you right now for the Holy Spirit working today to speak to our hearts. Father, give me right words to communicate today uh, for the church. I thank you, Father, for your mighty working in Jesus' name. Amen. I want to share with you today something that, um, that the Lord really dealt with me about and stirred me up about um, right after Easter. And, you know, we came off of Easter uh, even though we had to do it different, we were still celebrating the resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ, the death, the burial, the resurrection. And, and we were celebrating that, Christ being our Passover. And, and yet, in my spirit, I felt like there was still a spirit of discouragement that was trying to come on the church just like it is the world. 
And so I really felt like it, that I, I, I needed to hear from the Lord about this. And the Lord gave me a word that I believe uh, will help you because, hey, the world for sure is discouraged. But I want to tell you something. The body of Christ should not be discouraged. And I want to read a scripture to you out of Numbers chapter 21. And let me explain this to you for a moment. The children of Israel have come out of Egypt. And they did it by having a phenomenal Passover, the beginning of Passover, which we know literally became Jesus, our Passover, through His death, burial, and resurrection, and what we just celebrated here just a few weeks ago at Easter. So, so the Lord gave me this, and I want you to listen to this, because I think it will help you understand, because this is a type, a clear type, of, of our deliverance, but you've got to understand some things about this. So listen to what it says in Numbers 21, verse 4. It says, They journeyed from Mount Hor by the way of the Red Sea to go around the land of Edom, and the soul of the people became very discouraged on the way. And the people spoke against Moses, Why have you brought us up out of Egypt to die in the wilderness, for there's no food, no water. Our souls loathe this worthless bread. In other words, they had had a, a great deliverance. Uh, the, the Passover, they, they, the blood was put on the doorpost. They ate the lamb, which we know today is Jesus, and, and they prepared themselves, and God delivered them. Yet the Bible says that they became discouraged because of the way. Now, let me put it to you this way. The people had been discouraged. Now, listen to this. On the way. They were discouraged because they were going somewhere, but in that journey from where God delivered them, where they were redeemed, so to speak, by the blood over the doorpost and by the lamb that they ate, and God delivered them out of Egypt, they became discouraged. Now, listen to this. On the way. Or the way that they had to go to get to where God wanted them to go. And I want to tell you something today, and I want you to listen to this phrase. The body of Christ, the children of God, we are going somewhere. And so wherever you are today, you have to understand that God is taking us somewhere. Now look, I'm not blaming what's happened on God. I'm not saying God's, you know, authored this to teach us a lesson or authored this to do this or to do that. That's way beyond my pay grade. And listen, if you're, if you're a child of God, it's probably way beyond your pay grade too to figure out all the working of God. But what I want to tell you is this. Listen. Listen to me. The children of Israel got discouraged because the way <clears throat> to the promised land was not what they expected. They, they were going to the promised land. God had promised them the promised land. But now on the way, they're having some hardships. They're having some struggles. And because of it, they got bogged down in that and they got tied up with that and, and, and to the point where it was causing them to struggle. Now listen to me. You've got to understand something. We're going somewhere. We are, we are right now going somewhere. Our, great, our greatest somewhere is to be with the Lord. But even in the midst of that, in the middle of that, there are promises that God has made for us along the way. And I want to tell you, one of those promises is not everything's going to always be nice, everything's going to always be good. It, there is a a battle that goes on in the life of every believer to realize this is not our home. We are going somewhere. And so our journey and where we go, we have to understand how to get where we need to go and, and how we're going to accomplish getting where we need to go. Paul made this statement. He said this, While we look not at the things which are seen, but at the things which are not seen. For the things which are seen are temporal or temporary, but the things which are not seen, now listen to this, are eternal. In other words, Paul, through all of his difficulty, 
had his eyes on something beyond just where he was. He had his eyes on something else because he was going somewhere. He said, I press toward the mark of the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. He was going somewhere. And if you're not careful, listen to this. What, what will happen is you'll let life circumstances dictate you where you are now rather than realizing, wait a minute. I'm in a difficulty now. I'm in a struggle now. We're in a, we're in a season right now that's a challenge. But I'm going somewhere. And no matter what happens now, I have an ultimate goal. I am going somewhere. And where I am going eventually is to be with the Lord. But in the meantime, I am going along a path where God can work in my life no matter what's going on around me. But here's what happens. Sometimes we measure where we're, we are um, from by what, I mean, where we are by where we were. In other words, we look and say, you know, I had it pretty good. You know, I had it pretty good. Everything was okay. You know, I, I was doing okay. Everything was doing good. But, but listen to me. Listen to what I'm saying today. You can't measure where you're going by where you were, nor can you measure where you're going by where you are now. Because God's got a plan, and He'll lead you, He'll guide you. That's why He gave us His great Holy Spirit. That's why He gave us His Word, that we can have faith and know that as we go along our path, God is going to work in our lives, and we cannot allow ourselves to get discouraged. God leads us, God provides us, because we're going somewhere greater than where we are right now. And so you've got to live your life holding on to the promises of God, not getting discouraged along the way, regardless of where you are now. So, so listen, don't measure where you're going by where you were, because if you do, here's what you're going to do. Man, I can't wait to get back to where we were. We'll never be back where we were. This is an alteration in our lives, and it is an alteration in direction in our lives, and where we're going cannot be on the same trajectory as where we were because the path has been altered. Now, I'm not trying to get into some kind of deep theological thing here. What I'm trying to get you to see is this. You've got to look forward. You can't look back. You've got to look at the expectation of God working in your life as you go forward, regardless of what it looks like now. Think about the children of Israel, all right? The Bible talks about what God did for them and how they, how they work, God works supernaturally in their lives. In fact, over in, in Numbers 33, it says, God delivered them with a high hand, okay? The God, I mean, God delivered them supernaturally. I mean, in a marvelous, amazing way. But now, all of a sudden, they're in a season going to where God promised them to go, where there are challenges in where they are, and if you're not discouraged, you're going you're gonna to say, wait a minute, this isn't what I signed up for. And, and if you're not careful, what happens is you start remembering the way it was. Man, I tell you what, because I know this, I remember, I never forget when, when uh, Katrina and, you know, Rita in your area hit, uh, people started measuring time by before Katrina, after Katrina, before Rita, after Rita. I mean, it's like that was a defining moment of life. You know what? It's not a defining moment. Where we're at right now is not a defining moment. It's just a moment in time for you to move forward with God. And in the midst of where you are right now, God can still work supernaturally in your life. Because I'm going to tell you what really the devil wants you to look back. Do you know that the children of Israel, it's amazing, they look back to Egypt. You remember we just read, why did why'd you bring us out of Egypt? We're going to die in the wilderness. Well, wait a minute. Let's think about what happened in the wilderness. 
They had manna from heaven. They had quail or birds from heaven of some sort. They had water from a rock. They had none of that in Egypt. All they had in Egypt were taskmasters and bondage. And, you know, let me, let me put it to you this way, you know, because I, I, I've had this happen to me, and, and I'm sure some of you have too. I remember times, especially not too long after I got saved, and I started serving God, the devil would remind me. You remember how it used to be, man. You could party. You were free as a bird. You know, you could do what you wanted to do. And remember that. I mean, he'd bring it up to remember that party, how much fun you had. And, you know, if you're not careful, you'll start getting a, a go-back mentality. And here's what I did to solve that. I'd say, yeah, devil, you know, we had a pretty good time that night. Yeah, it was fun. I had friends and we had, you know, we had a good time as far as the world's concerned, as lust of the flesh, all that stuff. Yeah, it was fun. You know, you could put a fun mark by it. But here's the problem with that devil. I remember waking up the next morning, laying on my living room floor, don't even remember half the stuff I did or didn't do with a tremendous hangover because of that fun that I supposedly had. See, listen to me. You don't go back, you go forward. You say, God, what's next? What's next in my life? What do you want me to do? What's my future like? I I've got to tell you, when this, when this took place and they said, you can't have church anymore, first thing I did was I got mad. Second thing I did was I got energized. I said, all right, then we'll find a way to have church. We're going to move forward. We're going to do something for the kingdom of God right in the midst of this. We're not going to wait till we can go back to what we were doing. We're going to move forward and see God do something supernatural. And you've got to have that same kind of attitude in your life. If you, want, if you, if you, if you do that, listen to me, right in the midst of all these troubles, all this difficulty, right in the midst of it, I'm going to tell you what's going to happen. God is going to do something supernatural in your life. God is going to work something powerful in your life. Because He knows right now, listen, He knows right now that you're moving forward. He knew a long time ago you were going to be moving forward right here. And he'll prepare for you. He'll go ahead and prepare for you. That's what Jehovah Jireh, that's exactly what it means. God goes ahead and provides. Now listen, let me explain. Let me show you an example of this. Just so you'll ha th this be encouraged to know, hey, God's going to work right now. It, it, he's gonna, it's going to be okay. You get your faith on the line. God's going to work right now, right where you are. One of our church members, longtime church member, called me. And he said, hey, can I... Can I give you a testimony? I said, yeah, sure. He said, you know, you know, this guy had his own business. And so when they started shutting stuff down, his business, it, it, it hindered his business. And he said, you know, he said, I, I, I'm blown away by what God has done. I said, well, what did he do? He said, I have been taking care of my elderly aunt and uncle for many years. Uh, they had no children. They didn't have anybody to help them. And so I would help them. They lived in a really bad part of town, but they wouldn't move. And so I'd go help them and, and take care of them. And, and, and uh, my uncle passed away, so I was taking care of my <clears throat> elderly aunt. And, and so uh, as I was doing that and, and taking care of her, um, uh, eventually she passed away. And he said she lived in this really bad neighborhood and, you know, and I'd spent a lot of money helping her and got her in a nursing home and all that. But when, when she died, she left me everything. Well, everything was $300,000. He had no idea. And God supernaturally provided for him, and, that, and it was because of his actions before, but yet now God's blessed him. Not only that, let me tell you what else he did. He tithed. He said, Pastor, he said, I always promise the Lord if God ever blessed me, whatever amount it was, the first thing I'd do would, is tithe. Well, you know, the offices weren't open. He said, can I bring it by? I said, somebody will be there for you to, to take that tithe. And he brought, it, brought the tithe of that to the church. So what did it do? It blessed him, and obviously it blessed the church as well. God saw ahead and provided. We, we are doing drive-in church here in Shreveport 
at the campus in here. And I want to encourage you uh, to go online and watch us sometime It'll be, uh, when you're not watching your service. But, but we have a huge big screen out there uh, for people to see uh, in their cars. That screen came out of our children's church. Now, listen to me carefully. We bought that screen a number of years ago, many years ago. I don't even know how long ago, 10, 15 years ago. And, and, and so when we started talking about doing this, uh, Chad, our, 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 over our media department, he said, you know, we've got this screen and it's waterproof and it'll work outside. Well, I didn't know that. He hadn't even thought about that until we needed it. So not only did we have that screen for the children's church, but God provided an avenue for us to have that screen so that when people drove, uh, parked their cars, they could see that screen no matter how far back they were. God will go ahead and provide if you'll let him and not get discouraged about the way and start looking back and say, man, I wish I had my job back. Well, you know what? I believe God can provide a better job for you. I believe God can do other things for you if you'll just, if you'll just allow him to. One of the things that it says in Hebrews about the children of Israel that caused them the most problem was they did not mix faith with the word that was preached. In other words, all they were going by were their circumstances. God delivered them, the Bible says, with a high hand. I mean, he did an amazing thing when he delivered the children of Israel. But they forgot about that, and they, they quit mixing their faith with, with that word. And when they did, things started getting shaky. In fact, bottom line, it, it, got, it got very, very bad. So, so listen to me. One translation says it this way. The New Living Translation says, The people grew impatient with the long journey. Listen to me today. You're a child of God. You have the ability to be patient. You should not be of the rest of the world to be impatient and be uh, uh, about things. The, another translation says, The people became irritable and cross by the journey, <laughs> by the way they were going. Let me tell you something. You better be careful. You need to realize you're going somewhere. And because you're going somewhere, you don't have to be irritable. You don't have to be impatient. You can, you can believe God. You can expect God to work and see God do some great things in your life. But don't ever get caught in that place where you're acting just like everybody else. No, we're going somewhere. You know, listen, worst case scenario, we're going to heaven. <laughs> so... Along the way, God will provide for you what you need in your life. He's given us precious promises to live our lives. But you've got to get your focus in, re in real time and understand, you know what? I'm going somewhere. In fact, heaven is my home. I'm just a journey. I'm just journeying through this time on the earth. Well, if you're journeying through this time on the earth, you're going to run into bumps you're going to run into hiccups, but you know what? You've still got God ser to serve. You've still got God working for you, and you, God will work in your life. The Amplified Bible says it this way, that people became depressed because of the way. One trend, uh, the Amplified says, because of the trials of the way. I, I, I don't know whether you realize this or not. I don't want to bust your bubble if you think otherwise, but everybody has trials in life. Everybody has challenges in life. It's how you deal with them that matter. That's where you've got to make up your mind you're going to be a Christian. I'm going to live it God's way. I'm going to walk through this. Look, <clears throat> I'm going to tell you right now. I can't promise you that things are going to get better. I'm not going to get up and prophesy to you, well, you know, by July, everything will be just like it was. We don't know what's coming down the road. I'm not, I'm not trying to, to prophesy one thing or another. I'm just telling you, you've got to live your life differently. You can't live your life that way because we're going somewhere. 
And we've got great and precious promises to be given to us as we go. We can, if we need water out of a rock, God will provide it. If we need manna from heaven, God will provide it. God will work supernaturally. But you've got to realize, I'm going to do this by faith. I'm going to mix faith with the word preached, and I'm going to see God do something. I'm not going to get impatient. I'm not going to get myself in a place where I'm going to be irritable or depressed. I'm going to see God do some great things. Hebrews picked up on this, and I don't have time to teach all of this, but Hebrews picked up on this in Hebrews chapter 10, beginning in, in, in verse 35. Listen to what it says. Don't cast away your confidence or your faith, which has a great reward. Now listen, don't cast away your confidence. There's a reward out there. God's going to do something. There's a reward. You say, well, I don't, when am I going to get it? Well, it may be heaven, but you're going to get it. But don't cast away your confidence. Listen to the next part. For you have need of endurance. You have need of endurance. Listen, we are in an endurance race. And I believe God wants to bless us along the way and do great things for us. But we're, we're in an endurance race. And it says, after you've done the will of God, listen, you will receive the promise. I like it. We're going somewhere. We're not stagnant. We're not just living life. We're on a path. We're going somewhere. Heaven is our home. Eternity is our life. Not just how to, well, if I'm gonna, I wonder if I'm going to get my stimulus check or I wonder if I'm going to get my job back. Listen, you ought to be praying right now. God, thank you that you're my provider. God, thank you right now for the perfect job for me to provide for my family. Thank you, Father. No weapon formed against me will prosper in Jesus' name. I thank you I'm healed by the stripes of Jesus. No virus can come nigh my dwelling. You start living your life that way. You're going somewhere. You're living on God's promises. You're living on what God uh, said. The old covenant is just examples of how not to be discouraged. Listen to what else it says. It says in verse 37, For yet a little while he who is coming will come and will not tarry. So Jesus is coming. So that's going to happen. But listen to what it says in verse 38. But now... Now the just shall live by faith. Now listen. But if anyone draws back, my soul has no pleasure in him. Hey, I don't believe we're going to draw back. I like this next verse. Listen to this. But we're not of those who draw back to perdition, but of those who believe to the saving of the soul. That's where we live our lives. We live our lives as believers. We live our lives going forward. And so, so this, we've made a little crook in the road. Just like the children of Israel, they, had to, they went around, the Bible says, Mount Hor. They didn't go through, they went around. Well, it was a detour. And it looked like it was going to be a difficult time. But listen, if you'll just stay with it, God will do something supernatural. Once you read that, the very next thing that happens is that you go into Hebrews chapter 11 and it starts talking about all of the, all of the amazing supernatural things that faith did. It says women were raised from the dead. All sorts of things happened. It says kingdoms were subdued. People worked righteousness. Promises were obtained. All sorts of things happened. And those were just a precursor for us. That wasn't the fullness of it. That was a precursor. So then you go over to Hebrews chapter 12 and listen to what it says. Therefore, we also, since we're surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, who are those witnesses? Hebrews chapter 11. Let us lay aside... Every weight and the sin which so easily ensnares us. Now here it is. You ready? Let us run with endurance the race that is set before us. This is not a stop in time, folks, for four months. This is part of the race. Now we're running in endurance. 
the race that is set before us. <clears throat> not yesterday's race, not last month's race. Today, we're going forward because it's set before us. We're going somewhere. Here's how you do it. Listen to the next verse. Looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and is set down at the right hand of the throne of God. Looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith. That's where we've got to live our lives. That's where we have to walk every day. And I want you to listen to the next verse, okay? This will help you. Consider him who endured such hostility from sinners against himself, lest you become weary and discouraged in your soul. Listen to me today. Don't get discouraged in your soul. You keep your focus on Jesus. He's got, listen, he's got everything you need. He's got everything already provided for because of the cross. And he's going to lead you in your race all the way to the finish line. So you've got to stay with it. Don't give up. Don't give in. You keep your faith on the line. Expect God to move. And you'd be amazed at what God can do in your life, if you'll just keep your eyes on Him. Jesus is the standard that we look to. He was lifted up for us. If you go read over in Numbers, you'll find out that because they spoke against God, Jesus sent serpents. And then He put a serpent on a pole and said, look on that pole and you'll be healed. And Jesus said that that was Him over in John chapter 3. That was Him. He was lifted up. So we look unto Jesus. He's the author, the finisher of our faith. Don't get discouraged. And, and here's, the, here's the, I think, the last thing I want to say about this. Listen. Don't get angry with God. Don't start saying wrong things. Speak your faith. Oh, I tell you, this is going to be worse. Well, we had a good economy down here in Lake Charles, and now it's just gone to pot. All is down to zero. Oh, my God, it's going to get bad. Listen to me. That is not your source. You look unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith. You speak what God says. You declare your faith and declare what God says, and I'm going to tell you what's going to happen. Listen, you ready? God's going to work in your life. Well, what if he doesn't? Well, you're going to still live, you're still going to breathe, and you're going somewhere. But you know what? I have found that when you grab hold of your faith with Jesus, He always comes through. He always works. God does something. Just like the, the, the check that that man got. That, that God brought that into his life. There are other things that God has supernaturally done for people that, that we can stand on as a, a testimony of what God will do in the future. So listen to me. You're going somewhere. Get it off your mind. This is just a little detour, and we're going to go back to where we were. No, we're already past where we were. We're going somewhere, and it's going to be different. The landscape will be different, but if you'll just believe God, God will provide for you, and not only that, I believe it's going to be a tremendous opportunity for the kingdom of God to touch people's lives, to help them, to encourage them, to bless them. And I'm praying and believing that it's going to stir the hearts of the lost to seek an answer that is more than some temporal job or paycheck that they're going to get or stimulus check they're going to get, but that there is an eternal reward that God has for you. Let me pray for you. Father, Thank you, we're going somewhere. You're our leader. Jesus, you're our author, our finisher of our faith. Holy Spirit, you're our daily guide. And I thank you that we're not going to get impatient. We're not going to get irritable. We're not going to be discouraged. But we're going to see your kingdom expand during this season. And we glorify you and we magnify you for it. In Jesus' holy name. Amen, amen, amen. Praise God. God bless you. I love you. I miss you. 
Look forward to seeing you in person soon. Hey, I hope you got a lot out of that message today from Pastor Sam. I believe that, man, it would stir your heart. But I want to encourage you today. You may be one of those who, as he talked about, is looking for an answer today. You know, there's a lot of uncertainty in our world right now, but you may be here and you may have listened to this message today and you're really just looking for a way to get right with the Lord, uh, looking for a way to get back in relationship with the Lord. And I want to encourage you today, if that's you, today can be that day. This can be that moment that you can make the decision to let lay down your life and to submit it to the Lord and to really follow after him and all that he has for you. So I want to lead you in a simple prayer that can affirm that in your life. And so the Bible says there's really only two things that you have to do uh, to receive salvation. And number one is you have to believe that Jesus is who the Bible says he is, that he did what the Bible says he did. And that includes the forgiveness of our sins. But the Bible also says we have to believe that and that we have to confess that with our mouth. And so I'm going to lead you in a quick prayer that I believe will help you to start that journey and maybe get you back on that journey. And so if that's you, I'm going to ask you just to pray this prayer with me this morning. Say, Dear Heavenly Father, I ask you right now to forgive me, to come into my life. I, I, I surrender my heart to you. Father, I thank you that I am forgiven, that you are working in my life for your good purpose and your good plan. Father, I thank you that I now belong to you. And I thank you for it. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, hey, we are so excited for uh, all of you who have just made this decision today. Look, this is just the beginning of your journey. And, and this is the starting point, but God has many more things for you. So we can't wait to meet you personally and to see you again soon. Thank you guys so much for joining us. But don't sign off just yet. If you prayed that prayer with Pastor David, you have a next step. Click on the connect link and fill out your information and let us know the decision that you just made. We will be in contact with you soon. Thank you guys so much for watching today. We encourage you to like us on Facebook and follow us on Instagram if you aren't already doing so. We encourage you to engage in our post and we can't wait to hear from you guys.